Let's give God some praise today and worship. Let's stand on our feet and give him some praise and worship today. Hallelujah. Let's just think about all he's done for us. Hallelujah. And lift his name today.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. So glad to see you could all make it this morning. You remembered to adjust your clocks forward. Be sure to say hello on your way out to those who forgot. Let them know how wonderful the service was and how wonderful the coffee was, right? I think we took a note from the uh, city of Chicago. They woke up yesterday, their river was green. We woke up this morning and had coffee, unannounced. Fantastic, right? Again, we're glad you could make it here and join us this morning. Whether you've been here 40 years or you're visiting for the first time or you join us through Restoration Ministries, we believe God's got something for you this morning just for you, and we're glad you're here. If you are a visitor, we want to make sure that you stop in and see us at our Welcome Center in the back. Um, we'd like to give you a little something that will explain who we are and uh, a little bit about what we're about. So please stop into the Welcome Center there and pay them a visit if you could. A couple of quick announcements. We've got a men's meeting this Thursday, 7 p.m. here. Uh, it'll be followed by some food, most likely pizza. We'll throw some salad in, too, for those of you who are trying to get your beach body in order for the summer. Uh, we've got Sunday school opening up in April, right? Good news, good news. Uh, be sure to sign up. Aurelia will be in the back. Make sure you sign up with her. That would be fantastic so we can get a count on how many kids to expect in April. We have got prayer cards also at the Welcome Center in the back. So if you've got prayer requests, please be sure to get a prayer card, fill that out. You can drop that into the tithe box, and that's located just behind the sound booth by Joanne, and uh, we'll be sure that those prayer requests get in. And then there's also a, there's a group of um, people who meet Mondays, 9 a.m. at Restoration Ministries to pray, and you're more than welcome to come and join them as well. Every Monday morning, 9 a.m., at RMI. Scott Reese next week. All right, so the next couple of weeks for um, Sunday services, we've got Scott Reese coming in to speak. You've heard him before. Um, he is a guy who is in the thick of it at all times, walks the walk. Um, he, is, he is knee deep, shoulder deep, neck deep at times into the work of God. So you definitely want to be here to hear from him. Uh, next couple of services, special services for Palm Sunday and Easter as well. You want to make sure that you're here for those. Those are surely to be wonderful as well. I think those are my announcements, and I want to get out of the way so we can get back into worship because, it, once again, we did a, um, what do I call it, a cannonball into worship. Fantastic. I tend to start with Psalm 100 before worship. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Please join us again as we praise and worship.
redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Just sit in this in a minute, church. Just sit in this. I am surrounded. Let this land in your soul this morning. By the arms of the Father. And I am surrounded. Yes, you are, you are. By songs of deliverance. Sing that again. I am surrounded by the arms.
You may be seated. You know, I said something last week. I think it was last week. No, it was two weeks ago. I said, uh, worshipers do peculiar things, remember? But it's only peculiar to those that are watching, not peculiar to the worshipped, right? So what we experience here this morning, I don't, I'm sure Ashley did not intend to be breaking down an emotion this morning, did you? But something over, overwhelmed you. It's the love of God. And uh, I, I wasn't watching her, but obviously she's up here, so you could, you could see it. See, that's what happens when we are on this journey of worship. That's one of the beautiful things about worship. God does that. How many of you have had that happen to you in the middle, right? It just, it just happens. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So, I, I agree, Jeff. Good morning. Thank you for getting out of bed. You decided to lose that hour and come to church this morning. It is so good to be together, isn't it? And, uh, ah, here we go. Sorry. I can't. I get chastised every week because I leave this gum on this beautiful, there we go, now we're good. No, no issues, right? Hey, last week was amazing, just amazing. I want to thank uh, Keisha, I don't, I don't see her here today, but Keisha and Deneen, that, how, isn't it great we have a new ministry, that dance ministry, phenomenal. And, uh, oh, our friend Jen Wilson, our friend from Faith church she just she just packed it in didn't she it was just fantastic and and how about Matthew and Mary even though we had a bleep one word from Mary's uh, message <laughs> you'll have to see it and, and remember what she said uh, but boy that was a great testimony of, of, of what happens in worship and and how about this worship team aren't they amazing just credit incredible incredible so I've been teaching on praise and worship the first message was on praise. I said that we, we, uh, we praise God from a distance. We praise God, however, for what he has done. Remember, there's a sacrifice of praise that we bring to the house of the Lord or in the house of the Lord. And a sacrifice of praise is, is uh, one of many sacrifices that are pleasing to God. A sacrifice of praise is one of those. And remember I said, you know, so when we bring a sacrifice of praise to God, we got to make sure that the condition of our sacrifice is pleasing to him. But we praise him for what he's done, right? He heals us, so we praise him. He brings us through difficult times, so we praise him. We praise him for his love. We praise him for his mercy. We praise him for his his forgiveness, we praise him for his grace. And then the second message was on worship. We praise God for what he's done, but we worship him for who he is. We can praise God from a distance, but when we worship him, it's face to face. It's, there's an intimacy to worship. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. I, and I said there were three things that happens uh, when true worship is, is, is going on. The first thing is that, that we're in unity. There's a universality to worship. You know, some churches feel like they've got the market cornered on worship. Some people say we worship with an organ. That's the right way. Others say we worship with drums and, and all this stuff up here. That's the right way. Now, there's, there's no right way. We've been created to worship, and he loves it when we're in unity. There's a universality. It's not one denomination that has it all together or another. No, no, no. Heaven's going to be beautiful, right? It's all kinds of people. You've you got to be in unity to have true worship. And then I said worship happens when we're standing before the throne. It's face to face. And then true worship happens when we come dressed right for worship, wearing the robes, the white robes. Hey, you know, we all screw up. We all sin. We all fall short. 
but we got to be dressed right for worship. We got to be washed in the blood of Jesus. And, and so, so let me just say this that we walk in here in different, situ different situations in life and we screw up and we fall short and all that stuff. But here's the good news. To, to put those robes on, it's not some mystical experience. No, no, it's Lord, forgive me. I've had a bad week. I screwed up this week. Lord, I fell short. Wash me clean in the blood of Jesus. Oops, you're dressed right. You're dressed right. I, I, I think it was that message two weeks ago that I, I said, if you, if you feel like you need to be washed in the blood, stand. I think that was the, the, the message. And man, I, three quarters of the room stood up. We need to be washed clean. We need to ask ourselves as we continue learning about praise and worship, are we pleasing to God? So here's, here's part three. The message is entitled, Sing a New Song. And um, whether we're praising God or whether we're worshiping God, uh, it, it, it's about music, praise and worship and singing. It's about music. And music is powerful, isn't it? It really, really is. Uh, music influences our emotions. Music influences our behavior. Think about that one. Think about how many times in your past that music influenced your behavior to do things that maybe you're not proud of. Now, remember, this is a G-rated service. So let's get that one out of your head and, and, and move forward. But it's true. It's true. Um, worship, praise, music. Music is powerful. Many people believe, and, and I, I agree, that Satan um, or Lucifer or the devil or whatever you call him fell from heaven with other fallen angels, yet he was the worship leader in heaven. He was the anointed worship leader. There's all kinds of scriptures about this, and, and there's, a, there's one in particular, Ezekiel 28. You read that, it's clear. I don't have time to go there this morning, but read it. Read it, trust me, read it. And, and it talks about how Satan fell because of pride, but he was the worship leader. And so when Satan fell, the worship leader fell, he fell with his worship team. Other angels fell with him, and, and that group were not, a worship band anymore. They became a band of demons, and their, their sole thought in life is to pervert the song of the Lord. Don't think for one second that this anointed worship leader, Satan himself, don't think for one second he lost his ability to influence you and I with his talent to lead others in music. Are you with me this morning? Music is powerful. Music moves you closer to people, places, or things that you shouldn't be going to. Or music moves you closer to the presence of God. Music is about praise. It's about worship. It's about singing. We've sung all our lives. Come on. We've, some of us are raised in the church, and we've we sung in the choir, or we sung in Sunday school. Uh, we sing in cars. <laughs> How many times do you, you, you go to a stop sign or a stop and go light, a red light, and you see somebody playing the drums on their steering wheel, right? They're singing. They're singing in the car. We, we sing in, in the showers. We sing in the bars. Some of us used to sing in the bars. Some of us are still singing in the bars. Hey, whatever works. We sing, right? Some of us sing in tune. Some of us sing out of tune. We hear you. We, we know who you are. <laughs> but keep singing. <laughs> keep singing. We, we all sing. And singing is significant. That's where I'm heading this morning. 
So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Chronicles 25. If you don't, it's all right. Uh, got it up on the screen. This is a very significant passage about singing. 1 Chronicles 25. David and the army commanders then appointed men from the families of Asaph and Heman and Jeduthun to proclaim God's messages to the accompaniment of lyres, harps, and cymbals. Here's a list of their names and their work. From the sons of Asaph, there were, and there's a whole bunch of names. I'm not going to read them to you. You can read them yourself. Number three, verse three, from the sons of Jeduthun, there's a whole bunch of names. But I, I like it a little bit later in verse three that said, they worked under the direction of their father Jeduthun, who proclaimed God's messages to the accompaniment of the lyre, offering thanks and praise to the Lord. I like that. And verse 4, from the sons of Heman, and Heman rather, and then there's a bunch of names. Let's go down to verse 6. All these men were under the direction of their fathers as they made music in the house of the Lord. Their responsibilities included the playing of cymbals and harps and lyres and the house of God. And Asaph and Jeduthun and Heman reported directly to the king, King David. And they and their families, listen, were all trained in making music before the Lord, and each of them, 288 in all, praise the Lord. Hey, listen, there's something going on here. There are very specific people mentioned in this passage. There are very specific numbers of people mentioned in this passage. There are very specific uh, musical instruments mentioned in this passage. There's a, a, a band, a worship team and a worship band of 288 trained singers and musicians. How would you like to have that worship team, Dan, Ashley? It, it, this is what the Bible says. So King David, he's now king. He's making a big deal out of singing. David was a songwriter before he came, became king. He, mo he wrote most of the psalms. David was a musician. He knew the power of music. And so here's what's interesting about this. This passage that we just read, it's the first time in the Bible ever that worship was organized. It's the first time in the Bible that, that, that singers are, are, are organized, that there's worship leaders, that there's a big choir. It's the first time in the Bible that it said, and that's why I noted it, that people were trained on how to sing and how to play. And here's what's interesting to me. Worship is organized for the first time, and guess what happened to the nation of Israel? It flourished. They had victories. They had a nation that, that, that honored God and didn't Sacrifice to idols like some of the kings later. It's the first time, and I think that there's no coincidence that singing is organized and Israel advanced. And the same is true today. You show me a church that sings, and I'll show you a church that's having healing in their midst. You show me a church that sings, and I'll show you a church that has restoration and renewal and revival in their church services. You show me a church that sings, and I'm going to show you a church that grows, that has souls saved for Jesus. And by the way, that's this church. We've been focused on praise and worship from the very beginning. In 1972, this church began in the living room of John and Barbara Sullivan, for those of you who are visitors this morning, make sure you go to the back there. Tim, are you, is that you there? Yeah, Tim is in the back. Make sure you go back there. That's our, 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 our Hall of Fame honor wall for John Sullivan. But there's a picture there of the church in the, ba in the living room of John Sullivan's and Barbara Sullivan's uh, living room. And you can see people are in a circle. There's somebody leading worship, and they have these little uh, sheets, and they're, they're singing praise songs. Now, back then, I wasn't there, but they didn't know what they were doing. So what they would do is they would sing a song. They would take a puff on a cigarette and sing another song, take another puff. It's true. 
but they sang. And they outgrew the living room. And then we went to our second place, which was a, 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 the South Holland Legion Hall, 158th in South Park, little place. Maybe 100 people could fit there. We packed it out. We sang. We packed it out. We then moved to, to, to a, 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 a hut, if you will, on the, on the campus of South Suburban College, right over here. And we sang, and we worshiped, and we grew. And then in the early to mid-80s, we, we moved again to a gymnasium in uh, the MacArthur School Gymnasium, uh, right over there in South Holland on School Street. And we sang, and we worshiped, and we grew. As a matter of fact, I think our church probably grew most in that period of time in that gymnasium. We all grew it. We went to Calvary, the old Calvary gym over here, uh, until it was tore down, and we, we did a, a remodel to the whole place over there. Uh, and then God said, it's time for you to have your own place. And so here we are this morning, friends, in the Sullivan Worship Center, and God's doing it again, isn't he? He's doing it again. Because we're focusing on praise and worship and the word. We're focusing on the fact that this is a, a grace-filled place. We're focused on coffee and all the rest of that stuff. He's doing it again. I feel it. Something's happening. We're growing. And so I, I want to spend a little bit of time this morning talking about how significant singing is. See, God has given singing to the church for very specific reasons. I'm going to give you three. There's a bunch of them, but I'm going to give you three. The first reason is this. He has given singing to the church, to you and I, for participation reasons. Meaning, we all need to participate in singing. Let me say it to you a different way. Singing is a sport that everybody needs to participate in. Whether you're good at it, whether you're bad at it, whether you sing in tune or out of tune, whether, whether you're new at it or you've been singing all your life, it doesn't matter. We are all called to sing, not just worship leaders, not just pastors, not just choirs, not just good singers, everyone, everyone. You have all been called to sing to God. You were created to sing to God, and he doesn't care what you sound like. He loves it when his children Sing to him. Singing is significant. It's been given to the church for inspiration. Oh, man. Don't you love it? It's great to participate, but don't you love it from time to time when we have special uh, uh, artists that come and they inspire us in their songs, right? I, I, I don't know. I see some young people here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old guy now, but uh, isn't it, uh, is it Lecrae and... Uh, uh, is it Minio, Andy Minio? Is that the guy? Yeah, okay. So these are some guys that are, I'm seeing some nods. These are some, some young uh, artists that are, are inspiring our, our youth. Uh, I think of Chris Tomlin. I think of uh, uh, um, Kirk Franklin. I, I think of uh, Lauren Daigle. I, I, I think of um, Tasha Cobbs. I mean, Israel, you name it. They're all, a lot of them. They, and they inspire us. I think of our worshipers. When they sing, when they lead us, we're inspired. See, worship, uh, singing, rather, has been given so that we would participate. Singing has been given to the church to inspire us. And then, lastly, singing, remember, there's a lot of reasons, but I chose this one last, important. Singing has been given to us in the church to unite us. It's been given to us, to unite us. Nothing breaks down walls. Nothing brings cultures together more than singing. Nothing. You can have a great message, and it's great. You can have a great service, and it's great. But in my 40-plus years, I have never seen anything unite people more than singing. Can I get an amen to that? Yeah, something happens. We've been... We've been doing unity services in this church for, I don't even know, 30, 35 years. And something happens when worship teams come together 
and different denominations come together. And we're not here to argue about this or argue about that. We're just here to be inspired and we're here to participate and we're here to sing. Something happens in the middle of singing. There's not a church. There's not a, a business. There's not a family that hasn't been divided in some way in this last year. I don't know of a church around in the United States that hasn't had some issues in, in, in dividing in division because of COVID. This thing right here. It's divided people. Should I wear a mask in church? Should I not wear a mask in church? Are we doing too much for COVID or are we doing not too little? Now, I, I, I got to say kudos to all of you at Spirit of God Fellowship. I, I, I feel that we've been very sensitive. We have listened to those that are fearful and we've honored those that aren't as fearful and we've come up with plans to say, look, we, we got we to gotta think of everybody here. So we need to be vigilant. We need to, to be safe. So, so I think at Spirit of God, we've done a great job at just listening and being sensitive and, and we'll continue to as we emerge uh, from, from COVID. But lots of churches, man, there's been trouble. How about the riots and politics? It's divided us. We don't need to go there. You all know the story. There's people here this morning. There are people in churches around the country this Sunday morning that have been divided because of this stuff. Their relationships are not the same. People have been divided. So what's the answer? What's the cure to a divided nation? What's the cure to churches that have, had, have been divided because some of the issues that we have faced in 2020? I've got the answer. I have got the answer. I was in a meeting with a couple guys, and we were talking about this very thing, and Matthew James... He said, you know what the answer to this is? Revival. Revival. Oh, man, that I could see one more revival in our city. One more. Just one more. One more move of God where, where the walls come down, where, where, where we don't think about this guy, or that guy, or this person, and we don't worry about politics, and we don't worry about all the other stuff that's been bombarding us, and we just... Sing, and we worship, and we see souls come to Jesus. Revival. See, revival happens when we pray for it. Revival happens when we repent. I don't know of a revival that hasn't happened without a move of repentance. But in the middle of every single revival, there's been singing. Are you with me this morning? Singing. Revival will bring unity. Singing is given to the church to unite us when we sing when we sing when we were singing the power of God comes in the room when you sing when you sing I guarantee you you will have personal breakthroughs like never before when you sing you will have healing in your life I promise you now I have to say it sometimes he heals us here sometimes he heals us there but I've seen a lot of people healed in the middle of the service. When you sing, I guarantee you, you will be delivered from addiction. You will be delivered from the sin in your life. You're going to have victory in your life when you sing. Church, we do not realize the power that we have when we appropriate God's words on our lips and we sing it out. It's incredible. Jack Hayford, <clears throat> maybe you've heard of him. He was pastor of, he's still alive, but he still, he was pastor of a church called the Church on the Way. Big church in California, big, big church in the 70s, <clears throat> in the 80s, and even into the early 90s. Uh, it was a mega church. They had over 10,000 members at their, at their peak. And, and, and uh, Jack Hayford was a pastor, great pastor, but he also wrote songs, and he was a writer. And, and he wrote one time about the church on the way. He wrote about a season in his life where for two months, this mighty man of God would go into the sanctuary when nobody was there. 
in the morning, he'd go into his church for about two months, he said, and he did nothing but pray in that empty building. And he prayed over the bathrooms. <laughs> he prayed over the Sunday school. He prayed over the nursery. And then he'd walk up and down the aisles and he would pray for the seats in his church. He would just pray the power of the anointing of the songs that God's given to us as a church. And guess what? He writes that his church grew more in that two-month period of time than ever before. I think we should think about that at Spirit of God. I'm, I'm looking for a few people that might want to make that a ministry. If you want to make that a ministry and you want to come in here and sing to this empty building, we'll give you a key. Go for it. I've done that every now and then. I haven't done it as much as I, I should. But, but see, we need to sing in season and out. We need to sing when things are great. We need to sing when things are tough. We need to sing when we're alone. We need to sing when we're in the church. Don't ever stop singing. And if you're not singing, you need to start singing. Isaiah 54, verse 1. Isaiah 54, verse 1 says this. It says, it says, sing, oh, yeah, okay, sing, oh, childless woman. There's a lot of other uh, translations, and I like the other word better. Sing, oh, barren woman. Sing, oh, barren woman, you who have never given birth, break into loud and joyful song. What's going on here? Do you realize that, that, that uh, back then, if you were barren, if you didn't have a child, you were mocked? sometimes you were scorned do you realize and this is true back then when isaiah wrote this if you were childless people would literally come up to you and say well god's cursed you crazy back then if you could not have a child it was grounds for divorce yet isaiah this great prophet writes to the childless women Sing, O oh barren one, and you will bring forth life. Don't you love it? And so, what about us? We need to sing into the barrenness of our situations. You worried about your kids? We always worry about our kids. Do we ever stop worrying about our kids? Well, sing. You worried about this country? Don't watch another news show. Don't look at social media again. Well, it's good to be informed, but, but how about start singing? Start singing. Are you depressed this morning? Sing. Are you struggling with that sin that, that so easily gets you? Sing. Are you tempted? Sing. Are you battling addiction this morning? Sing. Do you need the touch of God in your life this morning? Try singing. Do you need victory over sin? Do you need the power of God this morning? Start singing. Prayer is great. We should pray every day. We should read the Bible every day. That's the foundation. That's the ABCs. Don't forget to sing. Are you with me this morning? Let me close with this story. As a matter of fact, you guys want to come on up? I know you have a final song. You guys know the story of Israel leaving Egypt. It's in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus tells that story. So Israel was enslaved to Egypt for hundreds of years, right? And then Moses, right? Remember Moses. He, he is sent from God to set the people free. And he takes them out of Egypt with God's help and a few plagues along the way. And, and, and they, they go into the wilderness on their way to the promised land. That's the story, right? But the children of Israel, man, they grumbled and they complained and they'd made golden calves in the middle of the... You've you got to read these stories. They did some stupid things like we do. And God had had enough. And he said, that's it. This generation that I set free, you ain't making it to the promised land. Your kids will, but not you. And you're going to wander for 40 years. 
in the wilderness. And near the end of that journey, one day, they were hot, and they were tired, and they were thirsty, and all they saw every day was sand and rocks and more rocks and more sand, and they were sick of it, and they were done with it. Imagine 40 years in the desert. And they were about to the end of their rope, and then one day they, they were traveling, and they saw a well in the distance. And they thought to themselves, wow, wow, finally we're going to get some fresh water. And they got up to the well, and they found out that the well was dry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Has your well ever been dry? But see, God told Moses that day, and Paul, if you could put that last scripture up, God told Moses that day, he said, gather the people around the well. And God made them a promise. He said, I'm going to do something special here. I'm going to, to have water spring up in the desert. I'm going to bring fresh water from this old well. Verse 16 says, from there the Israelites traveled to Beer, B-E-E-R, which is the well where the Lord said to Moses, here we go, I just said it, assemble the people, I will give them water. And there the Israelites sang this song, spring up a well, yes, sing its praises. Is that cool? Is that cool? But see, he made a promise to these people, but the promise didn't happen automatically. They were required to do something. They were required to do what? Sing. They were required to sing. And God's made a promise to all of you. He's made a promise to all of you. He's made a promise to every single person in this room. I don't care if you're saved or not saved. He speaks to all of his children. He loves us all. He's made promises to you. You know what I'm talking about. And yet some of us are here this morning, you're like, man, I'm in a drought. I am in a drought. I am tired. I am discouraged. I need some fresh water. I, I believe there's some people here in this room that are saying, I've been waiting for a husband. I've been waiting for a wife. And I'm getting tired. I know you've made me promises, God, but I'm getting tired. I, I don't, I don't. No, um, I, I don't want to get real crazy here, but I don't know. For some reason, I thought I'd say there, there might be a couple, maybe two couples here or so that are, that are, that are trying to have a baby. And, and you're saying, man, I, I'm discouraged. I, I want to have that baby. And there are some here this morning, I would dare bet, that are in need of a miracle. How many of you need a miracle this morning? Yeah? All right. A lot of us, we need a miracle. Well, guess what? If we look at life through our natural eyes and not our spiritual eyes, you're going to start doubting when you don't get that promise fulfilled. Because sometimes God comes in his time. His time is not our time. He'll always fulfill, but his time is not our time. Oh, man, I hate it when he does that. But we have to, we have to do this. Here, here's my suggestion to you. If you don't remember anything I, I said today, remember this. When you're going through life and you've got a promise and you haven't yet received it and you're in a drought, do this. Don't complain about the problem. Sing to the promise. Sing to the promise. We need to do what, what the children Israel did. We need to sing, spring up, oh well. Some of you need to sing, spring up, oh good-looking husband that's coming my way. Some of you need to sing, spring up, healthy baby. You're looking for salvation for a loved one this morning in your life? You need to sing, spring up, oh well, bring me fresh water into that situation. Are you looking for victory over addiction this morning? You need to say, spring up, oh well, bring me fresh water into that situation. How about a marriage that needs to be restored? Sing up, spring up, oh well, bring me fresh water into that situation. Spring up, spring up, oh well. See, when we sing to the promises of God, God will give us fresh water 
out of an empty well. Well, maybe, maybe you're thinking, I, I, I don't, you know, I hear you, but I don't know how to sing. I don't know, I don't know, what are you talking about, sing to the promise? Yeah, it sounds good, but I don't even know what, I don't know what that means. I, I, frankly, I'm new at this. I, I'm not sure I even know how to sing, period. I get it, I agree. Uh, what do I do? Well, you'll have to come to the fourth part of the service, or this, of the message, because I'm going to explain that in part four. I'll give you a hint. How do I sing? How do I learn? The Holy Spirit. That's where we're heading next. How many of you need some fresh water this morning? How many of you need some fresh water? How many of you need some fresh water this morning? Huh? How many? You need some fresh water in your life? Lord, I pray for this wonderful group, this, this wonderful church that I love so, so much this wonderful church that you love so much. This group of souls, sons and daughters, your sons and daughters that you love so much. So many of us though, Lord, we're in a drought. We, we, need, we need fresh water. We don't want to give up. So, 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 God, as we sing to you, Lord, I pray that you would bring fresh water to every person here this morning. Lord, as we sing to the promises that you've given us, Lord, I pray that we'd have testimonies in a week when we gather again of how you fulfilled some promises as we didn't complain and we didn't give up, but we sang to the promise. And then you showed up. Lord, thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got one more song this morning. You're more than welcome to just sit, I believe, and, and be inspired by this song. And then I'll close with a benediction. God still provides, tell the truth, if he's been good to you, and raise a shout, if he brought you well, everything with bread, sing praise God still provides, 
tell the truth if he's been good to you and raise the shout if he brought you around everything with red How can I keep it in? How can I keep them in my praise? Oh, oh my praise. So glory, glory. Hallelujah. I was blind, but now I see. Glory, glory, hallelujah, he's alive and he lives in me, we say glory, glory, hallelujah, I was blind, but now I see, see you Jesus, glory, glory, and hallelujah. He's alive, and he lives in amazing glory, 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 yeah. hallelujah, I was blind, but now I see, see you, glory, glory, hallelujah, he's alive. God still provides, tell the truth, if he's been good to you, and raise a shout, if he brought you out, everything with breath, sing praise Cause he brought me out. I testify to praise. Amen. Let's all stand for a blessing. May God bless you. May he keep you safe in his arms. And may he have mercy on you. And may he forgive you as he does over and over and over again. But may he remind you as you go into your week of the promises that he's made to you. And may he fulfill them this week as you sing, as you sing, as you sing. God bless you. Oh, thank you for coming this morning. We'll see you next week. You're free to be dismissed.